Hey, what's up guys? So we are back at the white wall. We haven't been over here in front of this table in quite some time. Most of our videos lately have been in front of our alignment rack doing installs. But the video I'm going to share with you today is on the most updated version of Olin's Road and Track Kit. Now this kit has actually gone through two revisions already. Uh, we only reviewed the very first release of this kit, which was almost exactly two years ago, I believe. So we'll share links to those videos as well as the assembly video, some of our reviews on the product, which actually won't apply now. So that's why we are shooting this video because, you know, it's pretty amazing. Olin's took our initial review of the product, flew out here, like I mentioned in some of our prior videos, they met with me, they happened to be in the area for an event at Laguna Seca. We discussed kind of what the shortcomings were of this kit and I was a little puzzled as to why they did a couple of things in the original kit that they had done. And um, I think a lot of it was done for cost savings. So they wanted to use some more kind of off the shelf products in hopes that it was gonna work well for um, our Teslas. And in our opinion, it didn't really work out that well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain to you guys what changes were made uh, they did not make any changes to the front dampers because there were really no issues there, but they did make changes to the rear. So, um, you know, this kit hasn't really been on our radar um, in quite some time. The reason it's really come back into our ecosystem now is because we've got um, a bunch of clients that are really involved in autocross and they're competing in EVX now. So a lot of them were in stock class before, so they couldn't exactly change out their springs and stuff. They had a lot, a lot of class limitations. Um, and regulations, but now that a lot of them have graduated into EVX, it's almost like an open class. I mean, there are some some limits, but when it comes to suspension, it's a pretty open class. Now, the thing is that there are guys running crazy spring rates in EVX um, and running some pretty expensive custom-built dampers, Penske's, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of money going into suspension there. Well, the reason this kit came back onto our radar is because it comes out of the box with higher spring rates. Higher spring rates than we would typically run on a street only car, which is why Olin's worked with us and they developed the Comfort Kit that you see us talk about most often on all of our videos. Um, this is their road and track kit. So this has an 11 kg per millimeter uh, front spring and a 12 kg per millimeter rear spring, which tends to be on the higher side um, in the grand scheme of things compared to the competition. Um, but that is very suitable for someone who's going to autocross their vehicle or even potentially road race their vehicle and wants those higher spring rates. So if you guys are more familiar with kind of, you know, imperial standard uh, measurements for spring rates, you take the metric rate, so like 11, you multiply that by 56, that's the multiplier, you get 616 uh, pounds per inch spring rate in the front and 12 times 56 is 672 for the rear. All right, so there you go. The other thing is I spoke with Olin's, they have about a three, they looked at the compression forces on, on their dampers. You can go up about three kg per millimeter. So let's just say it's about 160-ish pounds per inch um, on the front or the rear rate. In autocross, most of these guys want more of a delta from front to rear. So you could bump the rear up to about 15 kg. 15 times 56, 840 pounds. So that's pretty decent for an out of the box damper valving. Now these are single adjustable, so they do primarily adjust rebound, but there is some subtle changes to the compression curves as well, compression forces. Um, so let's go over the contents really quickly and then I'll get into what they had changed in the two revisions they had done. So obviously you've got your front coilovers here, uh, your, your front dampers. The spring purchases are already installed. Everything is exactly like this out of the box, except I pre-assembled the rear spring height adjuster over here. So you got your front shocks over here. You got your dust boots. Um, you've got some plastic um, thrust sheets that I actually did not pull out onto the table. So those would actually go onto here and slide onto here. And again, we'll share all of this in our previous assembly video. It's basically the same concept. Um, you've got your rear dampers here. Now keep in mind, these are all aluminum, crazy lightweight. Check this out. This is how light this is. 4.2 pounds. 4.2 pounds. All aluminum. Amazing stuff. Made in Sweden. 
Uh, the rear damper is inverted, which is also pretty neat because the adjuster ends up on the bottom. So uh, you can get to it without having to theoretically jack up the car. You can just lay down on the ground, get under there. We have more videos on that, how to adjust the damping. Uh, you got your rear dust boots over here. So those will obviously have to go onto here. They do supply with zip ties. The zip ties belong to the rear dust boots, not the front. All of that stuff is here. So this is your bag of hardware. You've got some spacers here, which go on the front dampers. You've got some knob extensions. Now these really are for the Model 3. I don't exactly think a lot of Model Y people will get this kit simply because um, probably a bit too stiff for those guys, but Model 3 people I think will. And if you want in the instructions, they give you a template. So if you want to cut a hole in your front tub on the Gen 1 Model 3s, um, you can do that. And then you can run this extension cable along with this knob here. The cable will come out of here. And then you'll have a gold knob, which is in this little cinnamon roll of styrofoam. So don't lose this. I almost threw this away the first time I unboxed. So yeah, so don't, don't, don't throw this away. Okay, can you guys see that? Can you see that? All right, so don't throw this away because there's some beautiful gold knobs in here. That will go on top of the extension. If you do not want to use the extension, you'll remove this adjuster here and you'll screw this one right onto here. Again, we'll share that with you guys in one of our other videos. Um, you get your spanner wrenches. So you got two wrenches in here, different sizes. All right. You've got your rear spring height adjuster. Now what's different about this compared to some other people is this actually sits in the lower spring arm in the swing arm. So I will show you that here. I have a factory spring arm here. All right. So the two holes over here, this is the knuckle. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. This is the knuckle side. This is the subframe side. This is the hole. This sits in here, okay? So then you adjust the height there. I've already kind of pre-assembled one like this. So you've got a spring perch and then you have a locking collar. Spring perch, locking collar, all right? This sits into here and then you got your spring that sits on top of there and then obviously by adjusting the height, it will raise or lower the vehicle. Factory rubber isolator goes on top of here. So now this is where they made the change. Now what they did before on the first generation, and I will, you know, again, share a link to that video or we'll share clips from that so you can see exactly what happened, is they actually used a, an adapter. So it used a two and a half inch or 65 ID spring. They would adapt a straight spring just like this Okay, so they had a straight spring in the back and then they adapted it to the top side. Now here's the problem with that. In doing so, they lost all of this distance here, all of this travel in the spring. So the spring ended up having to be really short. This is the front spring, so it's longer, but it had to be pretty darn short. The problem with that is it's so short that there's not enough stroke in the spring um, compared to what they needed stroke in the damper. So what they did in the damper was, and we'll share a clip from the previous video, they had like 30 millimeters of basically spacers here. So you lost 30 millimeters of compression stroke in the rear shock because of this spring design, because they used a straight spring with an adapter on the top. So that was a major bummer. So what they did is they just had to spend a little bit of money and they had to custom wind a spring. And that's what they did. That was a solution, the ultimate solution. Now, ironically enough, this is version one, okay? They came out with a version two. So here's version two. Version two allowed you to use a factory rubber isolator on top, but it was still really tall. So this was one way that they went to try and reduce some of the NVH maybe that would be caused in the rear. That wasn't good enough, so the ultimate and final revision, which is what's on the market now, is the custom wound spring. So you got a two and a half inch or 65 ID spring on the bottom side, and then you got an OEM diameter on the top side, rubber isolator sits in there, this butts up against the chassis, you have the complete stroke of this spring. They were able to remove the spacers from the rear damper, so now they regained all of that wonderful compression stroke, so you're not engaging the bump stop prematurely. You have, I would imagine, a lot more compliance out of it. Um, we did install one of these kits on uh, James's car, so you'll see a link to that video as well. 
over here. Uh, so that's the EVX build that we did for James. Um, and he's been doing really, really well. He actually autocrosses primarily in the Central Valley, I think, Fresno region. Um, so he sends me updates every week or every time he has an event, and he's just he's doing really well. In fact, he even came up here to um, Pro's Landing uh, up in Patterson. That's where a lot of our NorCal guys go to autocross. So he did really well over there, actually, I think a weekend or two ago. Anyways, this is going on another gentleman's car who lives in Patterson. So he's like super, super close to Crows. Um, and he is going to actually increase his rear spring rate. That's why he opted to go with this kit. Now, what I'm gonna share with you now is super, super cool. His video will be another one. Uh, so we'll share that with you. He's got a bunch of really cool parts getting on that car. Um, this is what I wanna share with you. We have a weight jack that we've been working on for quite some time. This weight jack is so neat that it will allow you to adjust the ride height without having to remove the spring. And the best news is that it is compatible with this Olin's out of the box spring. So if you want, I mean, this is, we consider this to be more of a race part, but if you wanted to have the convenience, cause I'll probably put these on my Model Y, of being able to adjust the height very easily, this, this is the perfect fit. I mean, we have them for multiple diameters. So you can go 60, two and a quarter ID, um, two and a half inch ID. So we, we kind of cover all the diameters, but what we keep in stock is a two and a half inch. So this sits in there. This sits in there, just like that. All right. And the adjuster is right there. You know, Mustang guys have been doing this for a long time. BMW guys, they all been using weight jacks. So this isn't some new technology. We're just working to get it finalized for the Tesla um, swing arm. So, you know, this thing also is articulating. So this bearing's still really tight, but this will pivot and articulate because every time this thing compresses or droops, it's not moving up and down like this, it's going like this. So the spring actually has to kind of bind on one side and then it extends on the other side. So, so this will allow it to articulate and that spring will stay in a good orientation. So that is pretty cool. Um, that's kind of what the story was with the Olin's Road and Track Kit. They you know, are an amazing company in the sense that if you guys have an older version of this kit, version one or version two, they will update your kit free of charge. So you just reach out to those guys at Olin's USA or reach out to us, send us a message, zevcentric at gmail.com. I will connect you to uh, Olin's USA so that they can work with you guys. Uh, it's to their understanding that they've moved through the majority of the market um, and updated most people. Um, but we did just run into one client recently. He just came in here uh, to get his bushings upgraded and we discovered that he had the version one kit. So I immediately linked him up with Olin's USA. Olin's USA is ordering him these springs. Uh, you will need to ship in your rear dampers to them so that they can disassemble them, take those spacers out, put it back together, and then they will ship you back the damper and the new springs, and you will have a great setup at that point. Now, if you guys do want to update that kit um, to one of our Comfort kits, you can do that as well. There is a cost associated with that, so just reach out to us. We can work with Olin to try and assist you guys on that. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Stay tuned for some of our future videos where we actually get some of this stuff tested on vehicles. We're hoping we can make it out to Crows and film some of our clients that are running this kit. We've got a bunch of other clients on other um, dampers as well that will be out there um, to film. Uh, I'm hoping that the vehicle that this is going on, he's a major DIY guy. He's actually building this car with his son so they can race it together. I'm hoping he'll have us do his installation for him so we can kind of film it and document it. Um, but he does have a lift and all the tools and everything at his disposal at his house. Uh, but I'm hoping we'll get to it. 
so we can share that installation video with you guys. We can share with you what we do with our weight jack on his car, the helper springs, the swift springs, um, show you kind of how that all works out. Once again, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hit that yeah. notifications button so you get notified of all of our future videos. Don't forget to check out our Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash Zevcentric. It's five bucks a month. Just show us a token of your gratitude. Hopefully you guys can do a you know, six month, 12 month um, thing where you just kind of throw us five bucks a month for six to 12 months. That would be really, really appreciative because we don't get compensated by YouTube. We're just a small channel and a small group of guys doing things that we love. And again, we will share with you guys links to this product in the description below. If you guys are interested in any of these products, we will appreciate your support in purchasing us from us. We will also show you guys assembly videos and everything that you need because we love to support our clients. Again, we love you guys. Thank you. And we'll see you guys on the next one.